Today is Palm Sunday. Christ is in our midst. This is the good news. And God only knows how during this time of social distancing, we need good news. Today I offer a few reflections on the feast day that we are commemorating. But before so doing, allow me to extend to our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, family members, loved ones and friends who are not Orthodox but who are Protestant Catholic, our best wishes for a joyous Easter. Today you are commemorating Pascha, Jesus' Passover from life to death. We wish you a happy Easter. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Palm Sunday liturgically commemorates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem six days before the Passover. It took place the day after he resurrected Lazarus from the dead. Jesus was heralded by the people with obedience, adoration, and love as a king. But we must remember that Jesus did not come into Jerusalem solely to hear the cries of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, but rather he also came in order to hear the cries of crucify him, crucify him, so that he might fulfill all righteousness and die his ignominious death upon the cross so that he could again rise again from the dead and corroborate that he is the Son of God. The good news of Palm Sunday was articulated by today's gospel lesson. It comes to us from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 12. And in verses 13 to 15, we are told that the multitude had gone for the great feast. This, of course, the day after, the day after Jesus resurrected Lazarus from the dead, which according to Apolitikion is the universal confirmation of the resurrection of the dead. So the day after this, the multitude had gone for the feast, which was the feast of the Passover. And hearing that Jesus was going to be coming into Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out and greeted him, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And we are told that all of this took place in order to fulfill that which had been spoken by the prophet of old, Zechariah, who lived in the 6th century, a contemporary, we are told, of Ezekiel. And Zechariah said, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, riding upon a donkey's colt. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which was a fulfillment of a prophecy, was a joyous event. Interestingly, the joy of this event can be, and in fact is duplicated in every divine liturgy that it is celebrated. And it is duplicated primarily through the proclamation of the word, hymnologically, prayerfully, and sermonically, but also through the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, which is the sacrament of communion, the body and blood of Christ. Christ comes into our midst as king at every divine liturgy. The unanswered question at the present time, at the present time when we are practicing social distancing is, how does one do that? How does one receive Christ into his life as king? And the answer my brothers and sisters in Christ, is a simple one. We do this in a twofold way. One, we do it as did the Jews in Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday. By being obedient, that is to say, being obedient unto the commandments of God, by being adoring, worshiping, even if that means worshiping, by streaming the service on television, sitting on your couches and drinking coffee, as I know some of you are doing, and also by expressing love, keeping in mind, of course, that love is Christ's quintessential command. 
But there is another very important way that we do this, that we can receive Christ into our life as king. And that is by heeding the exhortation of the cherubic hymn, that hymn that is sung after the gospel reading and prior to the great entrance as the proistamino, the celebrant, recites the 50th Psalm. And the cherubic hymn says the following. It says, let us who mystically represent the cherubim chant the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity, put away all worldly care so that we might receive the king invisibly as the angelic hosts. Now how exactly do we set aside all worldly care so that we might receive the king? And interestingly, and the church in her wisdom on Palm Sunday presents us with a beautiful epistle lesson that communicates to us how it is that we can set aside all worldly care. And that epistle reading comes to us from Paul's epistle to the Philippian Christians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 10. I read the scriptures extensively. There are many passages from the Bible that I greatly love. But without a doubt, and I've said this on former occasions, this has to be one of my favorite. And it is my favorite, one of my favorites, because it clearly and concisely and cogently tells us how to receive Christ into our life as king. But not only that, but it also communicates to us how it is that we can overcome anxiety in our life. And during this time of the coronavirus pandemic, we need advice on how to overcome anxiety. For those of you who watched the service yesterday, you know that Father Gregory gave a beautiful sermon on anxiety. And he pointed out that the key to overcoming anxiety is keeping one's focus upon Christ. He pointed out that Mary and Martha in Bethany, while they were grieving their brother Lazarus, only had their anxiety assuaged when they focused upon Christ and upon who he himself is, and thereafter he resurrected Lazarus from the dead. Now, Father's emphasis in his sermon was, to overcome anxiety, we have to keep our focus in Christ. What is beautiful about today's epistle lesson is, St. Paul tells us exactly how it is that we can do this. Paul says the following. He says, have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the God of peace who transcends all understanding will set your heart and mind on Christ Jesus. Here, Paul identifies three things we have to do in order to keep our focus upon Christ. We have to pray, we have to call upon the name of the Lord, and we have to give thanks. Saint Seraphim of Seraph was a 19th century Russian saint of great renown. He was an ascetic, and a monastic, and a man of great erudition. So spiritually wise was he that thousands of people in Russia during his time would come to his hermitage seeking spiritual counsel. And among the counsel that he communicated to them was the following. He said, acquire the Holy Spirit, and thousands around you will be converted. Now, this aphorism by St. Seraphim is communicated to us in a beautiful treatise called The Acquisition of the Holy Spirit. It is a treatise that I've quoted on former occasions that I've read many times. I highly recommend that you read it. Now, the acquisition of the Holy Spirit speaks to us about our purpose in life. If we are to attain peace, which is the antithesis of anxiety, we have to know what our purpose in life is, why it is that we are alive, what it is that God wants us to do, and what it is that God wants us to be. Now, in this particular treatise, St. Sarah from Osara says, our whole purpose in life is to acquire the Holy Spirit and as much of it as possible. This we do, he tells us, primarily through our faith in Christ, observance of the commandments, but also through the practice of Christian ascetic virtues and practices such as prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. The acquisition of the Holy Spirit is of paramount importance to the acquisition of peace. Why is that? Because the Holy Apostle Paul in his epistle to the Galatian Christians clearly tells us that peace is a fruit of 
the Holy Spirit. Peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. The importance of prayer, supplication, thanksgiving to peace as an antidote to anxiety is attested to time and time again by the Holy Scriptures. For example, the Holy Apostle Paul in Romans 8.31 says, He who calls upon the name of the Lord, that is to say, he who supplicates, he who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved and will be delivered. Speaking of how gratitude and thanksgiving is not an option, but a prerogative, the Holy Apostle Paul in his epistle to the Thessalonian Christian says, Rejoice in the Lord always, pray constantly, and give thanks to God in all circumstances. And our Lord himself, speaking about the answerability of prayer, he says in John 14, 14, whatever you ask of God in prayer will be given on to you. He does not say may be given on to you. He says it will be given on to you. Of course, this statement is predicated upon one's belief and faith in Jesus Christ. Now, interestingly, in today's epistle, there's a fourth thing that the Holy Apostle Paul tells us we must do if we are to overcome anxiety and receive Christ into our life as King and Savior. And that fourth thing is we must fill our minds with good things. The Holy Apostle Paul, for example, in Philippians 4, verses 7 to 10 says, whatever things are just, whatever things are noble, whatever things are holy, Whatever things are of good report, if there be any excellence, if there be any virtue, meditate upon these things. Meditate upon these things. And then he goes on to add, whatever you learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and then the God of peace will be with you. Now, how do we understand Paul's words? Very simply, what Paul is telling us is that whatever it is that we put in our minds is going to affect what it is that we are going to feel in our heart and in our emotions. So what this means is, therefore, is if we fill our minds through the social media or the internet or by the reading of newspapers and books and watching television, with bad reports about coronavirus, about crime, war, immorality, hatred, political partisanship, economic depression, then we are going to become anxious and depressed as so many Americans today and people in the world are anxious and depressed. Conversely, conversely, if we fill our minds with good things about God and peace and love and blessedness by the reading of the Holy Scriptures, the writings of the Fathers of the Church, by following our church services through the streaming services that we make available to you, by reading good books, by taking a walk in nature, by listening to beautiful music, then you are going to experience peace in your life, the peace that comes from God himself, that very peace for which we pray at every divine liturgy when we pray for the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls. Now, the Holy Apostle Paul, we know, was an individual who filled his mind with good things. Even prior to his conversion experience on the road to Damascus, he filled his mind with good things by reading the Scripture, by interacting with righteous people, and also by studying the law. But then, after his vision of Christ on the road to Damascus, he continued, and more importantly, filled his mind with good things by communing with Christ through prayer by reading the scripture, by interacting with Christians like Peter and the apostles, and by interacting with other positive people. Hence the reason why the Holy Apostle Paul said, as he did, whatever you learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and then the God of peace will be with you. Now when I read the scripture, and I read the Holy Apostle Paul's writings, and what he says about anxiety, I oftentimes wonder how it is he could have possibly said that. Because the reality is that the Holy Apostle Paul, like us, lived during a time of great anxiety. 
In Paul's time, he and his fellow Jews, and even in Christ, they knew about hunger and starvation. They knew about subjugation and taxation and persecution by a foreign power as being political realities. They knew about sickness and disease and pestilence. If we think we are the only ones who have a monopoly on suffering and sadness and depression, we have another thought coming to ourselves. Because all of these things that we are experiencing today were experienced in the Holy Apostle Paul's time and even in times prior to that. And knowing this, of course, is why God sent his prophet Zechariah 600 years before Jesus to give people hope, saying, Fear not, daughter of Zion. And Zion today is a church. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, riding upon a donkey's colt. Today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is Palm Sunday. Christ truly is in our midst. He comes into our presence as a king, even as he came into the presence of Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, on that very first Palm Sunday. What is of paramount importance, therefore, for each and every one of us to do is to receive him into our life as king and as savior, keeping in mind that we do this in a fourfold way through prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, and meditation. I reiterate for you the words of the Holy Apostle Paul. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the God of peace who transcends all understanding will set your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Happy Palm Sunday. May we all have a blessed Holy Week and a joyous Pascha.